BioBalance HealthCast, episode 114. Diet soda is bad for you. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging, covering treatment and solutions that include bioidentical hormone pellet therapy, safe and affordable skin rejuvenation, and spa quality botanical skincare. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. My wife and I were talking this weekend about the evolution of our consumption taste and how things have changed for us through the years. We've been married 27 years, and when I first met her, she drank uh, her roommate drank Tab, and my <laughs> wife drank Diet Coke, mm-hmm. uh, and they drank a lot of Tab mm-hmm. and Diet Coke. I mean, it was free food, not cost-wise, but calories. We all thought, oh, it fills us up. Yeah, it's free food. Because Tab Zero, I mean, yeah. for, they went off the market for a while. I think they brought yeah. it back, mm-hmm. uh, and now there are other diet soda products that everybody has some out there. But what we've come to realize is that we don't drink soda much at all anymore. And so I was mentioning to you... Diet soda, because you never drank sugar soda. No, we did, we did not. Uh, so, you know, what do you drink? And if somebody asks, you know, have, you're coming over for dinner, what do you drink? Mm-hmm. Uh, and my son, who's 17, doesn't drink soda mm-hmm. at all, ever. Mm-hmm. Uh, Which is a great habit. Yeah, but Besides the cost not, of it, you know, there's a lot... There's a lot of things that can that can harm you in soda, even diet soda. Uh-huh. And we thought it was just like water, only it tasted better and it had bubbles. Well, 25 years ago, we had a foreign exchange student from France. And at that time, Phyllis was still drinking a lot of diet soda. And so when Martine came to visit with us and Phyllis gets out a diet soda, Martine's eyes got really big. And Phyllis said, what? And she <laughs> said, my mother uses that to polish the silver. <laughs> She, she did. And Phyllis was like, well, we drink it. <laughs> or to tenderize the roast. Yeah, exactly. We used to use Pepsi to tenderize the roast. Yeah. But I thought that was just the sugar, but it's not. What is we it? We found out in this, it's it's the carbonation, but it mostly, it's the preservatives and the pH. And the acid. Soda is, is an yeah. acid, and its pH is much lower than blood or saliva or tears or anything. It's so low that it'll take the tartar off your teeth. I mean, not the tartar. We'll take your yeah, tartar too. It will. But it'll take the enamel off your teeth. Yeah. And it'll also. Soda has a P- diet soda has a pH of 3.2. Yeah. And, and, and battery acid is 1.0. Right. So, so hello. It's bad. It is it's bad. Ba- it's really bad for your teeth. And, and, and it average, does increase your cat. Consumption figures cavities. in the United States are that the average American drinks two diet sodas a day. Now, obviously, that's not true. And, then, we don't. and that means two. Are the eight ounce eight ounce I, cans, that but not seen. big gulps that are like an entire yeah. uh, six pack in one glass. Oh, Just yeah. because the glass is bigger doesn't mean it's one diet coke. Anyway, we're talking about one eight ounce can. <laughs> you know, I know these really obese people that go into the quick shop <laughs> and fill up their big gulp and check their oil. You know, right. It's and they can't go in a car without a quart of soda. But sometimes it's sugared because I have to take people, I have people that tell me, oh, the one thing I won't stop is that is eight big bottles or jar, either bottles, excuse me, um, Mm -hmm. plastic bottles full of Coke or Pepsi. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, you mean with sugar? Oh, yeah. Well, then I can't help you with your weight or help you not get diabetes or help you with almost anything if you won't stop that because that's just killing you. And then I didn't really realize until this study came out that actually it was a combination of studies. It was in Prevention Magazine. And they they showed that having two or more diet sodas, and that's the cans, a day causes kidney damage. Right. And that has to do with the preservatives and the pH Mm -hmm. of the diet soda, not the sugar. It isn't even about... It, is, it isn't kidney damage because you get diabetes, because that's another thing. If you have sugar in the soda, that increases it. Yeah, it was an 11-year-long Harvard uh, Medical School study following mm-hmm. over 3,000 women. And it says women that drink two diet sodas a day have a two-fold increase in kidney disease. 
over women who do not drink two diet and, sodas and a day. That may not sound bad because you think kidney disease, oh, well, I'll be 80. Well, I see, I see poor kidney clearance of water. Right. You know, we, we evaluate that when we see patients. Right. And high creatinines, which tells me how well your kidney is clearing all of the byproducts of your body. The toxins. And toxins. And so I look at that and I say, so what do you drink? Are you drink and they think I mean alcohol, so I always say, "What are you drinking, non-alcoholic?" And they'll always say diet soda. And well, that's and interestingly the enough, problem. the data isn't consistent for soda, so they don't think it's the soda; they think it's the sweetener. Okay. It, 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 the same measure for for women that drink regular soda okay, so. don't have the increase in kidney damage that women who drink diet soda have, and so, so. the conclusion that they make is it has something the to do sweetener. with the sweetener that's used in the diet soda. That's right, and, that, and also the preservatives. Mm -hmm. Because there's two preservatives used in diet soda that they don't need in regular soda. And okay. those two are damaging to the kidneys. It also, and all of you who are concerned about your weight should look at this, it increases the, um, the preservatives and the sweetener increase uh, your risk of getting prediabetes metabolic syndrome, which is even worse than prediabetes. It's okay. high blood pressure, high lipids, uh, high fat. insulin, obesity, and heart disease. heart disease. So all of those things increase if you have two sodas a day. Mm -hmm. I mean, two diet sodas a day. It, it so, increases by 34%. And a third, more than a third. Right, more than so, a third. That's ridiculous. I mean, everybody wants to lose weight. Stop drinking diet soda. Save your money. And, 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 <laughs> I mean, and drink if you water. do that, if you lose weight, you stop drinking diet soda, you get yourself healthier from that step alone, that may then position you to not have to take beta blockers, to not have to take cholesterol medicines, to not have to take diuretics, to not have to spend a lot of money on and time in the doctor's doctor office. visits <laughs> and have other ancillary difficulties that come out of these problems. You know, there... There are some uses besides tenderizing beef and things and for cleaning the your silver. Yeah, yeah, cleaning your silver. I mean, there are some times when we give soda, diet soda or soda to people who have dyspepsia. Like, for some reason, and it makes an acid stomach less acid. Uh -huh. Go figure. Because even though it is acid, it decreases the acid produced. And so it doesn't hurt so much. But, or if you're nauseated, often we give Coke. Uh -huh. You know, so or Pepsi or, or Seven Up or Seven Up, yeah. something that has has bicarb kind of in it. But having said that, we give one, and it's for an illness. It's like taking a drug. It's right. not like drinking it every day. So it's not a habit. And this is, you know, I always I always laugh. People look at me, and I have a diet soda in my hand. And I have to say, I used to drink a lot of diet soda, and now I drink very little. And so I'd have the soda in my hand, and people would say well, you're telling me not to eat sugar and you're telling me to exercise and here you are drinking diet soda. I said, it's, it's my only sin. I mean, it's that, I mean, not really, I'm <laughs> joking, but it's my only, it's my, my only, um, I guess, splurge. And so now I'm not well, even going to do that because by golly, I mean, I've, yeah, I've known I this for a while. I haven't that, been drinking a lot of it. I was talking the other day to somebody that spent some time in your office. <laughs> and they were talking to me about observing you have lunch over <laughs> over like a three hour period you ate a sandwich because you were on the phone you were seeing patients <laughs> you were dealing with the staff you'd run into your office and take a bite and you had a diet soda and it took all day to drink it at least that was, was their observation me? i uh, know who was watching. yeah you know who it was uh, <laughs> but, i did but that is i think fairly typical of the mm -hmm. way you spend your day so you, right. when, when you say, well, I drink a diet soda day, that's not... Uh, I drink it all, all day. day. <laughs> the same, <laughs> the same, same eight diet ounces. soda. Yeah, yeah. But I also drink water. It's like water. when you see candy bar ads on television, you know, these happy people are eating candy bars, and they take a bite, and it's a little bitty tiny bite, which I crammed the whole damn thing in. But, <laughs> it's uh, more efficient. Yeah, it's more efficient. But, but this is a concern about multiple studies, University of Texas, University of Minnesota, University of Harvard, that have identified salient risk factors. The one that she was just talking about, the metabolic syndrome, that was from a 2008 University of Minnesota study. There's another one from the University of Texas Health Science Center that says that, and, and they, we'll talk about what, they, what they're thinking is behind this, but says if you drink 
two diet sodas a day, you have a 500 uh, percent increased chance of being obese. In your waistline. In your waistline. I mean, belly just fat. It, belly fat, just so, here. Everybody goes, I want to get rid of this. And they, now I'm going to say, get rid of your diet soda. And yeah. I guess I'm not going to be drinking that anymore. Maybe I'll get thinner. My pants will be, be bigger on me. <laughs> so, in well, any case. Yeah, it's because they call it diet. Or, you know, you see the same things in advertising when they say something is light. Right. And you really look at it, it may be unhealthier for you than the regular stuff. Right. Just it, because it they, usually is because light usually means low fat, but that means high carb. Right. So we tell people who are who are trying to lose weight, don't get light and don't get low fat. Get if anything, get low carb, but yeah. but just try to eat real food. I mean, I know well, that's yeah, hard. I find that hard, but you have to eat real fresh foods. Fresh food, free range chickens. In order to be defined legally as a free-range chicken, it has to be out of the cage for like 40 minutes a day. I don't know that information. Yeah. 40 so minutes? 40 minutes a day. Uh, I want real free-range chickens, but I don't think I could eat them if they were my pets. <laughs> <laughs> I just want their eggs. <laughs> and I don't think that cream but, corn but the point would of saying allow that me to do that. Is, isn't the focus on the technicality as much as to say <laughs> that the terminology of marketing is a lot different than the terminology of consumption. And you need to look at the reality. So because they say it's a diet soda, doesn't necessarily mean there's any dietary benefit from Or any drinking. weight loss benefit. In fact, there's an opposite of the weight loss. In fact, you can always imagine in food, if they tell you one thing, it's the opposite because they're just trying to get you to, if you start eating chips, you're a goner. You know, even if they're low fat, if they're low salt, they have something in there that's going to make you eat them all, the whole bag. That well, Lay's Potato Chip for years had that commercial that they used, bet you can't eat just one. Right. No kidding. And they did very well. Yeah. But let's let's talk about toxins in our in, in diet soda. Oh, let's do. Let's <laughs> there are two there are two ways that diet sodas are are um, offered to you. Mm -hmm. They're offered either in a plastic, right? Right. Plastic bottle. Right. Or they're offered to you in a can. And those are the two ways they keep the carbonation in. And the cans are usually preferable because they can stay longer and keep their carbonation. But they're not preferable in many ways because they're made of aluminum. And aluminum poisoning is one of the toxins you can't get rid of unless you are unless you are chelated, meaning... Is that a heavy metal? It's a heavy metal. Okay. Aluminum itself isn't heavy. But it's a, considered a heavy metal, so it stays in your body, in your hair. You can get a hair sample done and see if you have a high level of aluminum. Right. And that was my only high toxin yeah. when I, a year ago when I did my um, hair analysis. And, and the reason they do these, these tests is heavy metals that you absorb in the cell tissues of your body, uh, you can't process out. And they are toxic, and they can eventually, if you get enough of them, kill you. Because right. they, they interrupt the functioning of the cell system, so your body can't function. And it's right. not like they, they specifically poison you. Yeah. Like mercury. The it accumulated weight of them. But, I mean, aluminum is associated with Alzheimer's disease and dementia. I mean, that's, there's lots of things it's associated with, but that's one of them, and that's yeah. one of them I don't want. So, part, so the inference part of, is drinking soda or beverages out of aluminum cans may mm -hmm. have a hidden cost. And you're not saying that no. that's been proven. No, it has been proven, but it hasn't been proven in this article. Okay. It has been proven by the people who, who do nutritional chelation. There are certain nutrients and vitamins that you can take to help bind up things like aluminum. And we have that ability by sending your hair off. We do a hair analysis, and then we get a list of, of um, nutrients or vitamins or specific types of other minerals you can take to attach to the aluminum and get it out of your body. So you can get rid of it. There's an extreme version of that that some practitioners take on for extreme toxins. And that would be chelation, which, where they put an IV medication into your system. And then it binds to the, uh, to the metal and then it goes it comes out your kidneys or your intestines and it's very hard on your kidneys and I'm not I don't know enough about that to promote it or to tell you not to I know enough about the nutritional uh, way mm -hmm. of doing this that say, that that is safe and it does not cause harm and it does work it just takes a lot longer time 
and it works better for people don't, who don't have a huge level of anything like mercury or aluminum, uh, chromium, cadmium. I used, to, I used to paint with cadmium, cadmium yellow. Mm -hmm. When I, I was a kid, I was an, somewhat of an artist, and I used to use, um, I mean, they used to have cadmium, believe it or not, in your pastels, like your oil pastels, and you used to use your hands without gloves and use the oil of your fingers to kind of smudge things. And, and I have a very high level of cadmium, or, or did before I took the we nutrients. We did the same thing in science classes in junior high with mercury. Right. I mean, they don't do that anymore, but when I was of a kid, they, <laughs> they would hand around they, little bubbles of mercury yeah, and you break thermostats put it, yeah. and put on coins and right. it would be shiny. And yeah, What we, we didn't did know that. then was we were absorbing through our skin the heavy metal poison. I was, I got a lot more, I was a lot more um, exposed to paint, than I guess, or p pastels than I was to, to uh, mercury. Mm -hmm. Even then, my mom was a prevention yeah. magazine girl, and she'd always be like, don't touch the mercury. Yeah. Don't touch the mercury. So she knew then, I don't have any mercury in my system, so I've already well, you checked know, You know that. the term mad as a hatter? Yep. That comes from back in the 1700s when they made hats out of pressed felt. Mm -hmm. The material that made the felt stick together was uh, a derivative from fulminated mercury. And so the hatters would mm -hmm. inhale the fumes of the mercury and mm -hmm. handle it and, and get it absorbed through their skin. Mm -hmm. And it would affect their brains. And so over their working lifetime, the more experienced hatters, uh, you know, you go through apprentice, journeyman, master, mm -hmm. Uh, the more experienced hatters were all mad. They were all insane because they had brain contamination yeah, from I mean, the heavy metal. I mean, that's the perfect example of a heavy metal poisoning. Uh -huh. And that would be some, if it was getting that bad, that would be something that a true chelation would have to be done by an expert. Mm -hmm. But having said that, if you're drinking out of soda cans every day, you're getting aluminum, and there's no way around that. And having taking nutrients to get rid of it is the only way you're going to get rid of it or getting chelated because it's that bad. And it can keep accumulating. You shouldn't even cook an aluminum foil hmm. because that's not good for you. I mean, I know that this, this is very hard because so many things we've always done, we can't do anymore. Now, right. plastics, um, we talk about... Um, I always get the, the name of it, BPA, is that right? <laughs> I should uh, benzo, know this. Uh, no, it's, a B, it's, it's the plastics that we have soda BPA, in. BPA, yes. Yeah, BPA. That's the same thing as water bottle, you know, water bottles like this. This doesn't have it in it. It's it has a, a one on the bottom, so bisphenol it's okay. Bisphenol A. Yeah, bisphenol A. Bisphenol yeah. A. Now, that, that is something that totally changes the metabolism of your hormones. So you can have... You know, you're thinking you're drinking water, but you don't look at the bottom and make sure it's a safe container. Right. And then you're getting bisphenol A, and you're getting it in soda in bottles and soda in some cans. So that's a terrible thing because that's, we wonder why girls are have, hitting menopause early, um, excuse me, menarche early, where they start having their periods younger and younger, and they start having larger breasts, bigger bellies. That's a, that's a, possibly related to all of the plastic in our environment. So mm. you can't even, can't even cook with plastic, you know. You have to look and be careful about the plastics that you use. You can look it up on the internet, but the safest on the uh, bottles is, is one, and the, the least safe is Is that why the fast food places four. quit putting food in styrofoam boxes? That's one of the reasons, but styrof yeah, styrofoam in itself is a bad. Yeah. Is because bad it doesn't ever break in. down. And, right. But, but it's bad to cook in, too. Yeah. It does it Like does putting it in the microwave to warm something yeah. up and leaving it in the, the You should put container. it in a glass dish. Yeah. Put another glass dish on top. That's about all you can do. Okay, so we're, we've come far afield. We started talking about <laughs> risks from drinking diet sodas that are specific health risks, and we've sort of uh, leached out from that into all other kinds of toxins and heavy metal poisons and plastic awareness. But there's the last thing. Mm -hmm. Well, there's two two more things. Okay. You shouldn't drink alcohol with a diet soda because it potentiates your hangover and your drunkenness. You can it it chemically allows you to absorb more alcohol into your cell structure. Right. Because you get the sugar drunker. that's in regular soda takes up some of that space. Right. And since diet soda doesn't have that sugar in it, and because it has the the sweeteners in it, mm -hmm. those things fool the body. Okay. So that's one thing, and the last thing is so that bourbon and diet coke is a bad move. It is. 
It is. Everybody drink vodka. Anyway. <laughs> the, um, and that's a doctor's prescription. <laughs> I didn't, don't quote me. <laughs> um, the, last, the last thing is that there is, if you're concerned about aging, this is probably the best reason not to drink a diet soda. And that is that our DNA have little, little tails on them. You know, DNA is our, our um, genetic structure. And the tails that are on our DNA are called telomeres. Telomeres. And like telomeres. And they, when we're born, we each have a certain length of these little tails. As we get older, they get shorter. And when we're out of telomere, we're gone. We, we die of We've something. We've used it up. Yes. So to slow this down, you want to avoid alcohol, radiation, smoking, all of the bad stuff we tell you to avoid. But one of the other things you want to avoid is diet soda. It shortens the telomeres faster. So you're going to age faster. You're going to look old faster. You're going to feel old faster. You'll get the diseases of aging faster. It's a bad thing. So that's you know, the cellular reason. We're always talking about studies, and, and I'm constantly reminded that the leading cause of death in laboratory rats is research. <laughs> so something's going to kill you. You got to pay well, your money and take your choice. Why should we look older and feel older before I we go? I agree with you. I absolutely my whole, my whole agree world is about keeping people young, healthy, it, and functional. It is about making selective good choices, the best choices you can make with the best information you can get to live the quality of life you want to have. It and you don't about need choice. this non vitamin S, vitamin soda. You don't need Consuming it. Consuming useless calories and maybe even harmful calories. And harmful containers. Yeah. You just don't need that. You can have do anything besides that. Do water. I don't mean alcohol. Do <laughs> do water. Do juice. Do my favorite is coconut water. I mean, in a and that does not come in a can. Mm -hmm. You know, in general, that comes in a paper, a wax coated yeah, cardboard box. Right. Yeah. That's right, and that's safe. Yeah. So, if you're thirsty, do so that and drink lots of water. Think about your consumption. Think about living in a society that is marketed for rapid movement, rapid consumption without preparation time and thought. And make better choices for you and for your children. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. Follow Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Brett Newcomb can be found at brettnewcomb.com.